It was completely finished in India. We came here with nothing. We decided we'll try and make it. Hey, look at all the speakers. Month to month, we'll, we'll see how it goes. How exciting. Both of them, you see me? I would have been happy just to attend TED. I've not prepared it, I don't have a speech. I just know my slides and I have stories. I thought to myself, am I qualified? And then I said, you know, who is? The first time I went to TED, nobody at TED knew anything about me. There was no expectation. And now I'm going back, this is like TED 2. You know, <laughs> like this time it's personal. I had a great story recently, uh, I love telling it, of a little girl who was uh, in a drawing lesson. She was six and she was at the back drawing and the, the teacher said, this little girl hardly ever paid attention. And in this drawing lesson, she did. And uh, the teacher was fascinated. She went over to her and she said, what are you drawing? And the girl said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, but nobody knows what God looks like. And the girl said, they will in a minute. <laughs> and so I've been thinking a lot about how to build on it. What's the best use I could make of 18 minutes this time, you know, to take the conversation forward? Wow, look at this place. Well, it's massive, huh? Hey, what time is my brief? Uh, I mean, two, my, two, my two. briefing. Okay. Two o'clock. Back where you came from. When it gets down to zero, which it shouldn't do, it'll stay on zero and flash red at you. <laughs> and you really must wrap up. Uh, it'll come in black. Yeah. And so we'll go tomorrow before uh, for the session. We'll do a quick run through. Yeah. Make sure it all works. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, he was like nervous about the rehearsal because it's weird, right? You're just presenting to the air. Who do I look at? Do I just. Do I scan? You know, With different people. Are, yeah, okay. that's right. That's so I'm sort of telling the story. Um, I'm really very passionate about the ideas. Very Good nice to see, to see you. you. Yeah. About the principles, and that's why I go on about it. That's why I write books about it. That's why I run projects and give talks about it, because it matters to me. Forward to hearing you again. Uh, me too. <laughs> so how are you going to tap your speech? That's the best speech in the history of TED. And I'm thinking, how's Sir Ken going to do, I given know. that... I don't know. <laughs> if that... How was it? Were you nervous when you... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, man, big time. It's really incredible to so yeah. just work out all the things. And... I'm quite excited. I'm not going to worry about it. Worry a little. Yeah. Worry a little. The whole thing's about the quality of teaching, isn't it? Yeah, I think that, so. That's the thing I find extraordinary. You know, governments put all this effort and money into defining curriculum and standards, but the bit they miss out is the teaching. I'm, I'm a little uh, nervous about the talk, so I, talk? I don't want to be reminded. <laughs> Looking forward to your talk very much. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Pa. How are you? I the ending. I wanted to change the ending a bit. Uh, how your art and your life. Almost every day, I speak to my parents. I think my parents are my harshest critics. Okay. <laughs> it is maybe a little long. But there was a point where my mother gave up hope. She was so sick that she just wanted to die. I remember that day. I was in a cafe in New York, and I called her and said, "Ma, have you heard of so and so, so and so, so Stephen Hawking?" Gates, Algo, whatever. And I said, well, I'm speaking with them. And she's like, wow. And I said, listen, I'm not going to tell you anymore if you don't promise that you'll be there too. When I told her that, she was so proud. And she said, I promise you I'll be alive to watch your talk. And uh, it was so far-fetched a couple of months ago, but now she's alive. Please, can you stay up and watch it or wake up early and watch it? I know you couldn't be here, so at least you're there. Bye, Ma. Bye. I was always absorbed in a book, science fiction book, which took my mind to other This worlds. audience, this place, today, these themes, you have to do it again. It's not like watching a movie, it's like being in a play. You know, you have to do it again every day and make sure it's right. The next slide I'm about to show you is something that I hesitated before including because my intention was not to hurt the public. My intention was not to hurt you. But I always want to have a bit of quiet time beforehand and get focused on it. I, I try and relax as much as possible because I think if you're relaxed, everybody else relaxes. And then I start to enjoy it. And once you enjoy it, you're off. 
how TED Talk has taken off across the world and seen by millions. His was one of the first to do this. It's one of the key things that convinced us that TED was no longer just a conference. It was ideas worth spreading. One of the great educational reformers, Sir Ken Robinson. There were a lot of things I might have spoken about at TED, but I was really keen to put a message out there to educators. Every education system in the world is being reformed at the moment, and it's not enough. Reform is no use anymore, because that's simply improving a broken model. What we need is not evolution, but a revolution in education. This has to be transformed into something else. The next slide I'm about to show you is a little more serious. I was hesitant to include this in my presentation. That evening I came home to hundreds of hate mails, hundreds of people telling me how they could have lived another day without seeing this. That's when I realized, you know, cartoons are really powerful. Art comes with responsibility. I wanted to read you a quick, very short poem from W.B. Yeats. I would spread the cloths under your feet, but I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly, because you tread on my dreams. And every day, everywhere, our children spread their dreams beneath our feet. And we should tread softly. I had a bit of a strategy. I said, I'm gonna go up on stage, and if people laugh at my first joke, then I know they're with me. And they laughed with me, and I said, okay, now it's time to play. I have fun on stage. Notice one thing, we're equal here. Something happened along the line. <laughs> and I actually imagined, I was talking to five people, the five people who, who I knew were there to support me. Thank you so much. Dreams are what guide us and what help us to become the best thing that we could be. And if you kill dreams, if you squash them, if you kill the capacity for dreaming, then you dehumanise us in a literal sense. Hey, that was a great talk. You are so inspiring. I thought, who am I to speak at TED? And I heard your speech. And I said, I, I am! I'm going to do that. <laughs> if you could do that, I could do that. You were fantastic. It was such an honour to meet you. We're, we're living in times of revolution. I think there's no question about it. There is a, a, a real appetite for common understanding you know, for common knowledge. I would have walked out of this talk if my mother didn't live to see this. I know I'm not asking, what did you feel of the talk, not how, how can I do better? I'm not asking. My mother's trying to make up for it. It says you were fluid and natural, you had the audience with you, my little supernova. This is making up for So dreams are really what I think make us who we are.